I've mm. probably been teaching math longer than you've been alive. Uh, teaching would have been a much safer, safer route safer, to right, go. Yeah, right, to. Right, right, right. You can get a non-math job, non-teaching job, nothing with math, no numbers. Then what would you like to do? Oh boy. One integral, 100 times, which one would you do? Oh boy. How, to, how, how should I start this? Let's see. Hmm. You don't have to do anything big. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hello everybody! Today I have a really special guest speaker for you guys, Professor Sam Pierso. I think some of you guys have uh, seen his video before on the Laplace Transform video and also the Differential Equation video. And thank you so much for being on my channel again. Thank you for having me. So, first of all, just a little bit about um, Professor Pierso. We have been working together here at Pierce for the past Three years? Yeah, four years. Four years together. Yeah, that first year, you didn't know who I was. I, I knew. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Before that, you taught at high school for like 30 years? Uh, about 22 years. Oh, 22 years. Yeah. So you have a lot of experience in teaching, both in the high school level and also the college level. Would you like to just introduce yourself more? Uh, sure. Mm -hmm. uh, well, let's see. I, uh, I grew up in Pomona, California. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went to undergraduate school at Loyola Marymount University uh, here in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I went to graduate school at uh, Cal State Fullerton. Mm -hmm. I got my uh, master's in education there and then I also have another master's degree in mathematics. I got that from uh, Cal State San Bernardino. I see. I taught in middle school for two years. Oh, okay. I taught in high school for 22 years, and now I'm in community college. Yeah. So uh, I've been teaching math for a while. I've mm -hmm. probably been teaching math longer than you've been alive, although I'm not I, sure. E maybe. Yeah, so would you like to just say hi to your former or maybe the new students who will be watching this video? Yes, be kind to me on the comment <laughs> section. All right, so perhaps this is like the most question that everybody will ask a math teacher or any math person in general. Why do you like math? Why do I like math? Well, yeah. uh, from a young age, it was my favorite subject. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was in uh, second grade and, at thir and in third grade, mm -hmm. um, I was a very precocious student. Mm -hmm. And I uh, wasn't necessarily the, the, the best behaved mm -hmm. student. And my second grade teacher noticed that I had a, um, a skill in doing long division. Mm. So what she would do to keep me quiet was she would give me these huge long division problems, much harder than we ever had in class in second grade. Mm -hmm. Like she would have some, you know, 11 digit uh, number <laughs> Dividing by some four-digit number, and she would just give me about a hundred of these, and she'd put me in the corner, and I would be there doing it and figuring out everything. Uh, that was the time that there was no calculator, right? Oh, no. Okay, so we're talking, uh, just, just so you know how old I am. So this is about 1971, 1972. So this mm -hmm. is before calculators, yes. Mm -hmm. But I mean, the whole point about the long division was, you know, figuring out the remainder and everything else. Yeah. So that uh, would keep me occupied so I wouldn't be throwing things at other classmates and running around and <laughs> doing things that I would normally be doing at home. <laughs> so uh, anyway, so that would totally keep me occupied. And I okay. loved it. Oh, cool. And in okay. fact, when I came home, my sisters who didn't want to talk to me, they would give me long division <laughs> problems to do, oh too. <laughs> Is there any reason why particular long division or why not multiplication or why not like memorizing the digits of pi? Well, you see, I wasn't memorizing anything when I was doing the long division. Yeah. I think it was just, we did it in class. Yeah. And she noticed I got everyone right. Okay. And other people were struggling with it. Okay. And, you know, I was such a pain to teach, yeah. and I was disruptive that she probably figured, okay, <laughs> give this to this guy. <laughs> so anyway, I just totally ate it up. And okay. it was the one subject that I really enjoyed and, and mm. would do problems for fun. Mm, I see, and I see. so that kind of got me on the track. I see, I see. And then in my third, gr my third grade teacher, you know, because teachers talk in the faculty lounge. Yes. <laughs> Second grade teacher probably said to the third grade teacher, well, this guy's really good at math, but he'll, if you don't give him a lot of math problems, he might be a problem uh, discipline-wise. So anyway, she was another math person, though, uh -huh. so she kind of formed me, and she could handle me a little bit better. I see. But that was like my first 
inclination that I thought it was fun where everybody else in class thought it was just drudgery. Yeah. And I had a certain skill for it. So that kind of got me into it. I see. I see. Interesting. So it shows you if you misbehave when you're <laughs> a, for grade school, you might, you know, have a career after that. <laughs> okay. Okay. Wow. And by the way, you also have um, interest in physics, right? Because your degree is in math and physics. Well, I was, a mi- I was a physics minor. I see. Yeah, I started yeah. off as an undergraduate as, a, as an engineering major. Oh, okay. And uh, I, I loved my math classes, but I hated my engineering classes. Okay. And um, my, I had a math professor who, who was, you know, egging me on. said, well, why don't you become a math major? Oh, okay. And uh, so I said, oh, that sounds good. So mm-hmm. I became a math major. Um, but yeah, I, I still had an interest in physics, though. I see, I see. And so uh, my degree is in applied mathematics, mm-hmm. and my minor was in physics. So mm-hmm. I, I do a lot. I like a lot of the physics applications. I see. I see. I see. I see. And how about did you like the proof type of the math more, or the computational type of the math more? Like the. Well, um, you know, in high school, yeah. Um, I really enjoyed my geometry class. Oh, okay. And at that time, the geometry was taught with, you know, there was, there were, we didn't really solve a lot of problems. It was a lot of proofs. A lot mm, of those two yeah, right. yeah, 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 I remember. Yeah, right, right. And now yeah. they've kind of de-emphasized that. They still do them a little yeah, bit, just, but not, not, as ma- not as many as we did uh, when I was in high school. And I had a great teacher. And I loved that class, mm. and um, that really turned me on to maybe wanting to be a math teacher. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, and that was, a, you know, a theoretical type of class. Yes. And so I, I liked that, but then, you know, I liked solving problems too. I see, I see, I see. Um, but you know, you didn't, you didn't. We didn't really get into proofs again until. And those of you that are going to be math majors, mm-hmm. you don't really get into more of the proofs until you become maybe a junior. At your four-year institution, you do a little, pr- you do some proofs before then, but not really heavy. Yeah. Um, but then, you know, when I started, uh, you know, doing all those proofs and uh, real analysis and uh, abstract algebra and everything. Yeah. I, I thought it was fun, although they started to get a lot more difficult than they were in <laughs> high school doing the two-column proofs. Yeah, seriously, seriously, but yeah. Uh, yeah, so I I like both, mm-hmm. but. Uh, you know, as a math major, you really need to to think that proofs are fun. Proofs. Be- yeah, a lot of students they don't like proofs. That's well, the, and exactly. I can see why because you know it's, they're hard. They are. They're they are. difficult. They are abstract and hard. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You have to get you have to get used to them. You have to think about the logic of mm-hmm. how you're going to prove it, and uh, you know it's a skill. And just like solving any any math problem or types of math problems, you just have to practice. Totally. What made you want to be a Teacher. Well, like I said before, I had a I had a really Just. good high school geometry teacher mm. that um, uh, I just thought was terrific, and that was really my first inclination that I that I wanted to teach. I can I see. Um, but at the time, um, my mother wanted me to be an engineer mm-hmm. because that that was at the time when uh, that was d- during when uh, Ronald Reagan was president. And the defense budget was, he kept increasing the defense budget, so there were all these jobs out there for oh, engineers back, and, you know, building back, building bombs and... Uh, back in the 70s, right? Well, um, I'm not that old. <laughs> this is in the early 80s. I, I just don't know my history that well, so I'm trying to recall. Yeah, so this is in the early 80s. Okay, okay, okay. So okay, her okay. thing was that, oh, you're good at math, become an engineer and you'll make a lot of money. I see, I see. So I see. I've already told that story that I right. hated my engineering classes, but I still thought about teaching. So I had some really good math teachers in my career, I, and that kind of got me propelled to I see. that. That's pretty much the same as me. I can totally yes. relate to that. So my high school teachers, they made me become a teacher. They yes. made me become who I am today. So, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I always think about that when I teach. Mm-hmm. I always, you know, you, not everybody's going to like you as a teacher, but I always tried to draw from good teachers that I've had mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then try to do some of the things that they did. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but you know, you always try to get the good things that you remember from the good teachers that you had. 
So did you consider to do anything else besides teaching though as your career? Well, besides engineering teaching. Um, I remember I thought about being an actuary oh, for yeah, a while. Same as me actually. Yes. Yeah, because that's the apply side. Yes. Was that your big thing back in the days? Like, because it's pretty big nowadays, like the data science. Yeah, it was. Uh, I just knew that you made a lot of money as oh. an actuary. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. So I, I was, I was, I was going out with somebody at the time that said, "Hey, uh, why don't you think about becoming an actuary?" I see. So I, you know, there's nine exams you have to take to right, be an actuary, exam, right? That, yeah. I took the first three. Oh, you did. And, okay. And passed those. Uh -huh. But um, I was talking to other people and. Uh, they kind of moved me away from being an actuary. And this is nothing against any actuaries that are out there. I was not an actuary, and uh, I don't know very many actuaries, but I, some people told me that, you know, do you want to sit in a cubicle all day long and mm. work on math problems and not, you know, you're more of a teacher. And I'd already been teaching at that time, too. Oh, I see. So I was, I was, I was already teaching. But, you know, then I decided to investigate this. I see, I see, I see. And so I thought that, you know what, maybe that isn't really cut out for me because I could not see myself, you know, working an office job. I see, I see. What's your favorite class to teach then? Well, uh, I have a few of them. Okay. And I like to teach a variety of different subjects. Um, I, I love teaching calculus. I mean that in any level mm -hmm. of calculus. Mm -hmm. um, I with between Calc one, Calc two, and Calc three, they all have parts about them that I really like to teach. I see. But um, for some reason, and this isn't necessarily what a lot of calculus teachers tell you. For some reason, I really like teaching Calc two. Me too, actually. Yes. Yeah. And I'll tell you why. I, okay. It has. It has no unifying theme to it, and I think that's why I like teaching it. Because you know, in Calc one, you're you're talking about the um, the basics of differential and integral calculus. You're yeah. laying the groundwork. Yeah. And then in Calc three, it's basically a continuation of Calc one, except now it's in three space. Three, e, yes. Okay. But Calc 2 is kind of a hodgepodge of all these different subjects that they're trying to tie together mm -hmm. that you need to know for further study in mathematics, but they had to try to figure out a place to put it and where it was appropriate, <laughs> right? Yeah, I see. And that's the, you talk to other calculus teachers, they tell you that's the reason why they don't really like to teach it. <laughs> that's the reason why I like to teach it. Because it's like, okay, now we're going to talk about some techniques of integration and some more applications. I see. All right, now we're going to go over to sequences and series, right? Okay, now we're going to do some polar coordinates. Yeah, you got so many things in Cal2. Right. Yeah, now yeah, we're yeah, going to yeah. do a little bit of differential equations. Yeah, I yeah, kind of yeah. like the fact that you're kind of doing that. Yeah. Um, plus the subject matter in there that I really like. Um, you know, it's kind of old school mm -hmm. because it's not as important as it used to be. But I, I really like in doing integration. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. You know? I feel I, like so much alike, yeah, to be honest. Yeah. No, I'm I, not just yes. saying this on the camera. It's like, seriously, I do feel no, it. No, yeah. I, I agree. But, yeah. Well, when we talk, you know, in the office, you know, yeah, we have yeah. a lot of the same interests. Yeah, yeah, But, yeah. you know, it's, it's uh, you know, nowadays, integration, you know, people can use computer algebra systems to figure out certain integrals or yeah. whatever they need to do. Yeah. But, you know... Being able to do a difficult integral, I, I just love attacking that. You know, like we talked about before, it's like solving a puzzle. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a good way to review formulas, it's a good way to review trig. Yeah, and then for Cal2, you do have a lot of like hard stuff yes. that you can do. So that's one of the reasons why I like Cal2 so well, much. Well, and, and the same with me. Like my Cal2 class this semester, not only do they have a good personality, but they really are working hard and they mm -hmm. know it's a... They find it. They find aspects of it difficult, but their willingness to learn more. Yes, I yeah. think is 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 something that really makes me like teaching that. Um, I like teaching differential equations. Mm -hmm. um, I like teaching trig. Mm -hmm. uh, I like teaching precalculus. But I mean, if if somebody said you can only teach one class, uh, and that's all you're gonna have, that's all you're gonna teach for the rest of your life. I'd probably say Calc too, okay. just because of the variety. In there. I, see, I, see, I, see. Yeah. I think that's an interesting question. I think I will choose the same too. I have not taught Calc three yet, yeah, so well, 
I'm going to be, te you know, I don't teach Calc 3 that often. Okay. I usually just teach Calc 1 and Calc 2 differential equations, but uh, I'm going to teach Calc 3 next semester. I haven't taught it in a couple of years. I see. And, um, you know, to teach Cal for me to teach Calc 3 well, I feel there has to be adequate technology in yeah, the classroom. Yeah, all the 3D and then all yes, the... Yes, because I can't draw. I, I have a very, very, good, very difficult time like drawing The 3D pictures, it's just impossible to draw right. sometimes. Right. Yeah. So uh, anyway, uh, check back to me about six months, I'll tell you how it goes. <laughs> Okay, okay, yeah. yeah. Maybe we'll do another interview oh, follow okay. up. Yeah. How's your Calc 3 class? Not going too well. <laughs> <laughs> what if you can get a non-math job, non-teaching job? Nothing with math, no numbers. Then what would you like to do? do? Oh boy. <laughs> um, a comedian? A comedian? Or an Just... actor? <laughs> okay. Somebody, something like that. Did... I mean, um, I, I think uh, being a teacher is, is some type of performance anyway. I agree, that we're on stage pretty yes, much. Yes, you yeah. are, and they're, the students are picking apart everything you're doing, or like you put your hand in your pocket, they know all of your <laughs> idiosyncrasies, um, yeah. you know, and uh, so... <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, I love I love comedy. Okay. I, I love uh, I love watching comedy. I love going and seeing comics, and I all I I always wanted to be a comedian, but I was I just didn't want to take that step because it was something that wasn't like to be a comedian and to go in that lifestyle. Yeah. Like you really have to take a leap of faith because there's no safety net. I see. You know, like you, you, if, right. you're, if, you're, if you want to be a comedian, like you're going to have to go to the clubs, you're going to have to come up with an act, you're going to have to come up with funny jokes, you're yeah. going to have to do all that stuff. And it just seemed like uh, teaching would have been a much safer, safer route safer, to go. Right. Yeah, right, 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 right. But I mean, a I think, math teachers. Yeah, I yeah, think yeah. that if I had to do anything else, if somebody told me that I couldn't do anything math-wise, I think I would probably at least try that. I see. I see. Do you have any favorite comedian? Then mine is Gabriel Iglesias, Fluffy. Oh yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah How about yours? Funny. Yeah. Oh, I have a lot of them, but you know, since I'm older, they they go they go back a ways. Um, you know, the Marx Brothers. Okay. Um, you know, um, uh, Woody Allen when he was doing comedy. Mm -hmm. Modern day Chris Rock. I, I thought Don Rickles was funny, you know, he's he's old school Vegas kind of guy. Okay. You know, but people like that. But I, okay. I like all different types of comedy, not necessarily those people. I see. Okay, so let's talk about math. What's your favorite math topic, theorem, or formula? Just one. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I have a lot. Mm. I mean, I think any math teacher or anybody that loves math it's kind of hard to narrow it down to one yeah. because you know they're they're all kind of like your children. Oh man, yes, you can't, yes, yes, you yes, can't yes. pick. Oh, this is my favorite <laughs> child. Yeah. I know, I know. But I, I think that's... it's I think it's hard to go any way other than just the fundamental theorem of calculus. Oh, totally. I mean, because that not only is it beautiful and important, mm -hmm. but I mean, it's it's simplistically beautiful, mm. and you know you work so hard to get to that particular point, and then when you get to that point and you're able to prove that that's true, mm -hmm. I I just think it's it's just a, a wonderful thing to see, and you know the students see me get excited when I teach Calc one, mm. you know they think I'm crazy, but you know there's a couple of students in class, you can see they are feeling the same thing I'm feeling. Mm. Where they that's revealed yeah, that they just can't believe that there's there's a connection between you know finding the area under a curve and a function's derivative. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's after you struggle for a whole period of time trying to estimate areas with rectangles and all this other stuff, you know, and then you can then if you can find an antiderivative for a function. You know, than yeah. being able to find the exact area. Yeah. Obviously, there's much, many more applications of that, but I mean, we start off with that. Mm. One of my students mentioned it to me that 
a lot of the big name theorems, like their formulas were the result, this seems too obvious. For example, like fundamental theorem of calculus part one, the derivative of the integral function is just the function itself. Right. right? But it seems so easy. But like it's really hard to prove that. Yes. Yeah, like so I told them the students that yeah, it, the, the theorem statements they are really easy to, to stay and to just work with it, but it's hard and beautiful to prove that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Both of us we have a we have a long time to commute. My question is, do you think of any math? Or teaching while you drive? All the time. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, all the time. So you're teaching. Um, because usually when I'm driving in, I think about you know what I'm going to be doing that day, mm -hmm. and I, you know, if music is on in the background, or if I'm listening to music, or I'm daydreaming a little bit, I'll think about. Um, you know, maybe there's a better way to do that particular topic. And I might change, like mm -hmm. halfway through the commute, I might change the plan that I've had doing that to doing something else or doing some other, um, doing some other problem that I think might be better a better way to explain it. Uh -huh. So yeah, I'm always thinking about different ways of doing things. And, and uh, you know, I think that's what keeps things fresh as an instructor is that you know, good instructors always try to think of different ways of doing things. And the, after they teach a class, they, they think about, okay, what went right in this semester? Mm -hmm. What could I improve on, mm -hmm. you know, and, and change, change some things up? Oh, so yeah, I always think about different things, yes. I see. This particular question as well, what is your favorite integral? I don't know if you knew this was coming or not, but like, one integral, 100 times, which one would you do? Oh boy, you know, there. like I said before, there's a lot of them, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. but if you can only do one for the rest of your life, well, well you have to do one for I like mean, I, th I think like my favorite integral, and I guess it's not necessarily my favorite integral to do, Okay. but I think, you know, I'm going to come at it from a teaching perspective, since okay. we've been talking a lot about teaching yeah. uh, today. Um, when I teach Calc 1, yeah. after we've proved the fundamental theorem yeah. and shown that it's true. Yeah. I always like doing uh, the integral from zero to pi of sine x dx. How so? Well, I'll tell you why. Because yeah. um, it's a problem that we did before, or I do before with them, trying to figure out like what's the area under the curve from zero to pi of sine x. Mm -hmm. Like that's like before we start doing definite integrals, I just kind of throw that problem up there. Mm -hmm. Can we estimate what this uh, area is? You know, have the students talk about it. And so, mm -hmm. you know, they'll say, okay, well, if you make a rectangle with a base of pi and a height of one, okay, so it's gotta be less than 3.14. Yes, yeah. You know, then, you know, if you make a square of, of side one, they say, oh, well, you know, it's got to be bigger than one. Mm -hmm. You know, then you go out to pi over two and, you know, you draw a rectangle there. Oh, it's got to be, it's got to be bigger than pi over two. So now they know that it's in between 1.57 and 3.14 mm -hmm. approximately. Mm -hmm. And some students think that it has something to do with a circle. You know, like oh, the top part of a right. circle. They think, think, think that that arch right. of the sign is like the top of a circle. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So they think, oh, you know, it's going to be uh, pi over 2, you know, mm. or, or actually, no. Pi? Pi, pi over 4. Okay. Yeah, Which because it's going to be number. half of that. Yeah. Okay. So they think it's going to be pi over 4. Well, you know, this isn't a circle. So, you know, we estimate, we do the rectangles, we do all that stuff. Then after the fundamental theorem, and you do it, and you say, hey, it's two. <laughs> yeah, it's just two, right? It's just two. It turns it's out to be two. an integer. Yeah. And I, I no. said, isn't this unbelievable? Because you see, most, stu see. most students, when they have a trig problem, they think the answer always has something to do with pi. Right. They think yeah. it has to, uh, pi's gotta be involved somehow yeah. in the answer. Yeah. And to see that the answer to that kind of problem is an, is an integer, a yeah. positive integer, yeah. I think is beautiful. Yeah. I think that it, it shows the power of the fundamental theorem. And um, it's an integral that I especially like to do. Mm -hmm. And so it's a very simple one, but I think it shows the power of calculus. Mm -hmm. I see, I see. Interesting. 
Maybe I'll use that when I teach K1 as well, yeah. just to draw it to the students and ask them about like before what you, you think. Before you even talk about estimating rectangles or anything else, just draw this one arch or you know of the sine of so, X yeah. and say, can you tell me what the area under this curve is? It, 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 it's, in, it's impressive what some students will come up with. Mm -hmm. It's also unimpressive what some students will come up with too. <laughs> You'll find out what they're assuming or what they don't know. Yeah. But yeah. anyway, it's and then you see after a couple of weeks, and then you get to the fundamental theorem, you go back and revisit the problem. Yeah. Hey, remember this? Mm. You know. So anyway, maybe I'll put that on my Calc One syllabus. This is that for fun? Okay. What do you think? What the answer to this? Area yeah. Is now you're always going to have some smarty pants in there that have taken calculus before at oh, calculus yeah. in high school, and they'll just say, "Oh, it's two because yeah. they know the fundamental thing." So they kind of screw it up. For <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> so you say, "Okay, those of you that have had," I always when I teach Calc one, I always ask, "Who has had Calc one before?" I and see. see how many people are in there, mm. and I always tell them, "Okay, try to forget everything you've ever learned from Calc one before because." Mm. Uh, a lot of students that have had exposure to calculus before they have college calculus, they kind of think that they know everything, mm -hmm. and uh, it can, they kind of get lulled into a false sense of security, oh, yeah. and they don't work as hard in the class. And yeah. you know, a lot of times, the calculus one that you have in college doesn't necessarily align with the calc that you might have had in high school. Yeah, and we might do more things, and so. Um, or we might ask you to prove something that you might not have had to do in high school. So, you know, that's that's an issue too. Yeah. So. One thing I would like to add, though, a lot of students that I had in the past, right, they knew the power rule. Yes. And they thought they knew all about calculus. Yes, that that's was the no problem. Good. Yeah. That is the problem. Bring the two to the front, minus one. Oh, I know everything about calculus. Right, exactly. <laughs> okay, so perhaps let's see this. What's the one thing that you really want your students to know about you? Well, I think the one thing I would want my students to know about me is that, you know, we all kind of, every once in a while, if we want to get depressed, we read our reviews on uh, RateMyProfessor.com. <laughs> now, you know, most of mine are good, but there are some in there that, you know, I don't know what I did to this student, mm -hmm. that, you know, I'm the worst person on the face of the earth or whatever. But, uh, you know, you can't please everybody. But yeah. I just want everybody to know that, you know, at the beginning of my semesters, I might come across as strict and harsh, and you know, you got to do this and you got to do that, and you got to memorize this, and yeah. you know, because I, in my classes, I I do ask my students to do a lot of memorization. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't give them formula sheets unless I'm teaching stats or something. Mm -hmm. But uh, so you know, a lot of students, oh, you know, he's hard, and he's you got to do this and you got to do that, but. Um, I think when you get to know me, and I think uh, some of my former students will tell you, uh, you know, I as long as you do the work for me, I'm very reasonable and I'm fair, and uh, I care about every student. That's mm -hmm. the one thing. Right. I think yeah. a good teacher, you know, we want our students to learn. If students fail my class, I feel bad about it. Like, I, I know that some of that is on the students, that maybe they didn't work very hard, but if there are other students that I know really tried but they still failed the class. Mm -hmm. Like I'm wondering, is there was there anything else I could have done for this student to help mm -hmm. that person along? Mm -hmm. um, so I want everybody to know, if you're going to take a class of mine, that I really do care that you are successful. And all you've got to do, if you are having trouble in my class, is to come and see me during my office hours. You know, I don't bite. I'll help you. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know, I'm there for you. So I really do care. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see. So it's about time, and thank you so much for Professor Priyasa. Well, thank, thank you, you, you very so much. much thank you so much. Yeah. I'm 32 years old. 32. So okay. maybe when I was born, I was like one or two. <laughs> You know what? Oh, yeah, I, I might have started teaching at that time. All right, yeah. back in the 1986. Right? Yes, you know, 1986, that was the first year I taught. You serious? Yes. <laughs> wow. I was 22 years old in 1986, yes. Oh, my God. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, I didn't know about that. Yes, yeah. I know. Okay. Now, it's making me feel even older well, than no. I already am. No, 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 no.